tight. I'm not getting that inflate anymore. <clears throat> That rubber is definitely pushing against that edge, which is what they're designed to do. That rubber pushes against the counter shaft just like the old one did. But the problem is it pushes against the bearing. If it locks up the rollers, then you got problems. The rollers won't work. It'll slide, and it'll be a problem. Yeah, it sheared off some rubber. Yeah. Going in there. No big pieces though, just a little. Yeah, just a shaving. Yeah, we took a, that one piece was fairly good, but it wasn't a big chunk. I got more drag in the head. Sure, it's that rubber over there to jam it in there pretty hard. Half yet, about if you spray some lubricant in there. It's got tons of lube in there. I greased it up pretty good. I forget what I did to get. I think I just. Bumped it back and forth again, as I recall last time. Well, you also tapped it to stress relieve it. That was on the main shaft. Your counter shaft's not flexing back and forth like it was. Can't get in there to really do anything to make it. Go back and forth, they have no access to get to it. It's just going to eat itself up. That's called the break in period, it's going to clearance itself. You know, it's not locked up by a long shot, it just has a lot more drag in the head before, that's all. Definitely got seal drag on everything. You got seal drag here and seal drag here, so it all adds up. Okay, I need a, my knocker. Screws are too thin. This will probably break the bit off, but at least you can run a damn hole where it belongs.
speaking of the guy, if we torque these, right? I've got that tool, actually. That's why I give him a one-time torque. See how they're not moving anymore? Right. Those are tight. They're in there. Sure. We didn't deburr that edge. I found a new spot. Did you get cut? Yeah, let's let me know. It's, it's sharp. Let's put it that way. Nice burr sticking up on that thing. When they took a cut across it, it didn't. It's like a sp it's a spot face. It wasn't a yeah, it's spot face. It's not cut all the way across the whole surface. You leave that nice edge to get you. Okay. I'm gonna draw blood now, so you might not be happy. So I didn't grab on that area before, so I didn't get poked before. And I guess I just missed it up like that. Yeah. Fingers were right between it. Yeah. We had it up about a hundred times. Let's see, I picked up under there and not on the side. Right. All right. Okay, so all this is tight. That's lock tabbed in. So all that stuff is in there. Put the shift shaft in there. See if this stuff's gonna work. I'm hoping so. There we go. We're gonna shift the shaft in. Boy, that's sure a lot better. One side of the other string. Still nice and free, so that's good. Yeah, we picked up a bunch of inflow there somehow. How that happened? There, yep, there's some in there. It's hard, it's got drag on it, trying to overcome it. All right, so everything's we gained a little bit on second gear, but it's still good. It's all good. Everything shifts like it's supposed to. Yep, there's low gear shifting all the way across. I'm in the same spot again, everything shifts together. Look at that. Good. Okay, so now we're back to our stupid drum. We haven't checked to make sure this goes through this yet. There we go. So we know that works. So now we got to figure out how we're going to time it because I have no idea what the timing is going to be. That's where we got sidetracked before. Pretty sure it's not supposed to be all the way against the stuff, though. Okay, so it's going to rotate forward a little bit more. We're at. It's 
about a quarter of the way. And we're not a quarter of the way, so we're a tooth off. Go one more tooth up. There. I'm going to guess that's where we're going to put it. We'll assemble it, shift it, and then we'll see where how much we are off. There's no timing marks. Readjust it. Adjust it or as needed, yep. So I gotta tap this in here a little bit. Not that hard. Okay, now we gotta shift it to see what, what's gonna happen here. We don't know. Start shifting. Okay, so we're all the way against high gear. We haven't put the indent in here yet. Looks like it doesn't go all the way against the stop. Do we have the indent ball in there yet? We do not. It's right there. So here's our new unit here. Oh, oops. Are you going to flew on there for you? Put it in there. I probably shouldn't have put that on the threads. I was going to lock tight in there after it was done. And this is our new plunger, which I checked before to make sure it would actually mm -hmm. thread in. Now after I put this in there, I'll put the Loctite on there, the capillary Loctite, and let it soak in and seal it. I'm not going to peen the case. I never did like doing that. Tricky to start before, now we got tension on it. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to feel the ball. Yep, there's the ball. Okay, see where our lever's at? Mm hmm. So I got part of a pinky finger. So that would be in high gear? Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we got to shift it through the gear. Attempt to shift it through the gear anyway. Not exactly shifting easily. Let's see, we're going to need a new sprocket, right? I should have grabbed the new ones and let you clean them. Do what? I should have grabbed the ones in the pack and let you clean them oh. instead of the ones I did. I used to do these like 50 at a time. Right there. They were all oiled up? Oh yeah. They were just dripping in cosmos. You just dripping in it. Okay, so here's your key. Scooby. Hmm. 
sloppy job of painting, putting it in, see there? Yeah. Okay. Must have been a Marine and not an Army guy. That's the seal, too? Yeah. These are Army bikes. The Marine probably helped do this. Right. I'm guessing. Those Marines are something else. Don't go force it. <laughs> These are tricky to put in, but you got to make sure they line up and go straight in. It would be nice if I could actually see what I was doing. Yeah, I was completely screwing that one up. Flashlight out. The tricky part with these is. Uh, Keys like to turn sideways on you and not go in. See that one sliding up and this one sliding out. See, neither one of them want to go on. Yeah, won't stay on. See, when it won't go through the key, through the sprocket, that's a problem. So, if one way doesn't work, try a different way. I'd be shocked if this worked, but... Hold it up. No, just it's just gonna be one of those deals. It's gonna. So I don't think I can do it this way. No. And the keys have to be in the in the shaft. That one's gonna just slip out, and this one's going to just bow out when you touch it because it's tight. I found to never use lubricant on those keyways. The oh. thickness of the grease, look at that. You got it. Okay, so I gotta get it woken up. So you gotta get his attention. Right. And you put the other one in it. So you can get this guy's attention also at the same time. Having light helps. So. Want me to shine it? Well, I got some light on that right now. Now that one's going to fall out instead of staying in. There we go. See how the camera. See, you can see both keys are in there where they belong. Mm -hmm. So, they're both in there where they belong. Which is exactly what you want to be. And good, we can get the shaft out with the gear on here, so I can go ahead and put the nut on this, at least hold it on there for us. Let's see, get my finger over there. And that's all chewed up. Nice threads. Okay. Okay, now I can try to shift this thing. It doesn't want to shift. See the dog, so
something's engaged. I think it's engaged in this gear over here because the fork is in the wrong spot. There's just no way of. So we have no idea where these forks are at. So I think we're in two gears at once right now. So this isn't going to work this way. I'm going to take it apart and try it again, a different way. I have to do one at a time. So we need to somehow identify. Dog-wise, let's see, I want my pen over here. Another ink pen. There you go. This one will leave a decent amount of mark on stuff so I can tell which gear goes where. So at least now I can see where I'm at right now, because I have no idea where I'm at. I'm fighting spring tension over here, so I gotta back this off. Makes that easier to get out. We'll take our shaft here and blow this one out. gear size, I'm going to take out the low gear one. Step back in. Put this back in. In the same spot, I didn't really move anything. Okay. Won't shift. Problem. Here again. There it goes. Bingo. Okay, it was right in depth. Okay, so now we got that gear. There's neutral. Now we gotta do we have to identify where we're at. You're not watching anything while you're filming it this far away. Um, okay. Right. You can't see what I'm doing, so I can barely see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm in neutral now. I got past where I'm this dog is moving. So now we're in neutral, which is way underneath in there. So we gotta do is we gotta figure out where this fork is is relative to the other side. So I can move this fork side to side to center it. So right now. It looks like it is rubbing in there against the high gear. So this fork here needs to go over to the right a little bit. It's hard to see up in these things, but everything's a shadow. So if you get it to where you can see just right, the dogs, you can kind of see where you're at. So that's what I'm gonna have to do is figure this all out. And nothing you can really watch, so we'll come back when I get further along, I'll show you where I'm at. So right now the, I still got to see if this is in the right spot here, so there's one notch, there's the next notch. So we can check that. See, I can't get my finger under here right now, 
So I think I'm one tooth off on this from where it needs to be. So I can fine tune that. Get it to where it equalizes from one side to the other. So, but usually they come pretty close to the covers anyway. That's in first gear right there. Yeah, usually they come almost and touch the cover. And we're touch we're right in that same spot. So that actually probably is where it belongs. Because I know they get way back against this cover. So that is probably where it belongs. But I'll double check it to see where we're at. Here, hold this, let me check it. There's all kinds of little stuff we gotta figure out. Okay, now we gotta work the shifting now. Come on, get in gear. Damn thing slides over. There it goes. Next gear. See, it doesn't. See, you got that tight spot in there. That's because that concentric. The gear is not concentric. We need to do is lap it, but we don't. We can't lap it anymore because we can't get the parts apart to clean them. You're just gonna have to wear itself in. So you're gonna get a little tight spot going in the high. Okay, so see where the linkages are right here. Mm-hmm. So if we want one more tooth, I think we would be too far. Too far. I think you're right where you should be. And you also see the mechanical advantage where that lever's at. Mm -hmm. If you went any further, it'd be pushing straight. Even, right. You couldn't even hardly shift it. No. So we were in the right spot. Same going the other way, too. It's up against there. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm going to play around this a little bit, and we'll be back. Yeah. Okay, I got a point where I can kind of figure out what I'm doing here. You have to find some kind of a reference point to go by. So right now I'm in third gear, which is not high gear like on a regular bike is. Okay, right now the dog is all the way against the gear. It can't go any more over. And the fork has no load on it, but the dog... Uh, it's hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time. Okay, the fork, not the fork, dog. See how the dog is... Flipping back and see I'm blocking the gear. See when you push the the fork has no load on it when I've got the dog all the way against the gear. The free play is right up against the edge. Camera can't focus when I'm doing this. Let's see if I can fix this problem. Okay. So I'm right up against the edge and the fork I'm taking all the free play out of the fork, but I'm not bending it over. So so basically it's in a neutral position. I'm going to rotate this to the other the other gear. Here. To do the same thing, I actually have to put a bind on the fork to shove it all the way in gear. So that means the fork needs to go slightly to the left. It's about one shim. So and I don't know if it's that's going to do it or center it or not. It's just really hard to see what you're doing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and try that adjustment and then see what it looks like. And then once I do this side, I'm going to go over here to the other side and do the same thing over here. And hopefully I got, I can see the same thing basically. It's, it's really hard to tell. It's actually within one shim, that's, that's for sure. So. So, yeah. so that's all you can do. There's no other way of really doing it. It's just kind of a play around with it and Get some kind of a reference to figure out what you think is on centered and use that as a reference all you can do yeah, but the timing here on this looks good all right so that's it for this you can't view this when i'm doing it so i'll be back okay so okay i looked at high gear again at a different angle and it looks like it's centered pretty good so i'm not going to screw with it if anything it's slightly toward high gear not away from it okay so now i'm trying to put the low gear one in and right now we can't even put the, the drum in here because the dog down there, which way down in there, is hitting on the side of the, the groove. So you get a gap on this side and on this side over here it's hitting. So that means the fork is too far over. We're right Because right now we're right against this dog right here. You know, it's bottomed out against the gear and it needs to go over further even to put it on. So that means this fork needs to go that way to the right quite a bit. Yeah, we're talking of the gap plus 
to get it in there. So we're looking about 50 thou movement probably. So I'm going to give it a good 30 thou worth of shimmer movement. And we'll come back and check it again. But Because to be between the dogs, we have... left out a spacer and a fork. This number 6754 spacer. I think that's supposed to be in the 45s as well as big twins. 6554. No. 6754. Shift fork shim. All twins, so they don't have it in there. It's pretty thick. So they left out that big spacer. See, that's the one that had a big stack of shims on both sides. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the spacer. The spacer's even thicker than the shim. So if you put a spacer in here, it's going to move the whole thing over like we need it to move over quite a bit. Hmm. And that's the piece that's missing. See the spacer right yeah. there, that thick spacer? Yep, yep. That's the one that's missing on the other one. And that's why it's so far off on the adjustment. Well, I rode this thing once and it shifted, but... Yeah, but you had a different tranny in there at the yeah. time. It might have been lined up with the other tranny, but with this one, it's not. It's not even close, so... All right, so I could go hunt down the spacer. So we'll be back.